Welcome back guys, it's Mori here, and in today's video, I am actually sunburnt. Yep, you see that? That's sunburn. That's what happens when you're white and you leave the house. We're also going to be going through the best settings for Vanguard, which came out today to help you guys get the best FPS and overall experience in the game. We're going to go through controller settings as well to dial in that aim. Alrighty guys, so we are going to start off in the graphics and display tab, specifically under graphics display mode. That is going to be full screen borderless for me because of my monitor setup. You guys will probably run full screen. From there, we've got my monitor, which obviously will be different for everyone. V-Sync, I've got disabled. Custom frame rate, I have got enabled and we've got that at 250. Then the frame rate is different for basically menu and um, when you've got the game minimized just to basically not overtax the computer when you're not really needing to. Aspect ratio is set to automatic. Brightness is already dialed in when you launch the game. Display gamma, we've left at 2.2. HDR automatic. We have focused mode is off. Display adapter, that's my graphics card. It'll be different for you guys, so don't worry about changing that. Then from there, we're going to jump over to quality under graphics, and we are going to go through all of the little settings that are going to help you get the best FPS possible and also an overall good experience in the game. Texture resolution you want set to high. Uh, it doesn't seem to hit the frames that badly if you set it basically as high as you want. So we are going to go ahead and do that, and also just the better detail in the uh, overall gameplay is nice. Then you start getting into some of the other settings which we are going to be dropping down. So texture filter is medium, particle quality low, particle resolution high. Bullet impact sprays on, that's just because I like the overall experience. Shader quality high, tessellation off, uh, view distance long. And then we've got nearby detail and distant detail. This is a new setting in Vanguard. Basically what's the quality what do you want to do there? I've said it's a high. I have a fairly high performance machine here. Um, it's got a 3080 Ti in it and uh, I do have 32 gig of RAM as well. So it's sort of way overkill for what we're doing here with gaming. So I'm allowed to push that a little bit up. If you have a little bit of trouble with that, you can drop that if you want to. That's just basically the quality of detail at different distances. And the level of detail distance range depends on basically switching between when you get the near detail. So you might have high near detail, but then at long range, you want to drop that down if you've got a lower end machine. The basically the long, uh, the level of detail distance range depends. It basically is telling the machine at what point is something long range. So when should I actually change between those two settings? Anyway, so I'm going to change that back to high. Uh, clutter we have on low. Um, volumetric we have low, screen space shadows off, shadow map resolution low, low, off, off, high, doesn't really matter because we've got it turned off anyway, um, particle lighting low, ambient inclusion we've got set to static objects, uh, screen space reflection we've got off, DLSS we've got off, 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 Filmic SMAA, that's an important one for the ali anti-aliasing. I can never say that word every time I do this thing. Depth of field, you definitely want off. So what depth of field is, is you probably can't see it on YouTube, but basically it blurs anything that's slightly out of focus, creating a more cinematic feel. So you might want that for campaign, but definitely you do not want that because it's going to basically make it harder for you to see people. And then VRAM usage, I've got set to 85%. Coming down here, field of view, you want this on 120. Reason you do is, one, you can see more people. Two, makes you feel like you're moving faster, which actually, oddly enough, you would think if you're moving faster, you would have less control, but I definitely have found that by testing out, a lot of people play on 105 because it's easier to see people at long range because the higher the field of view, the further away people will appear. However, when you set it to 120, I have just found that being feeling like you can move faster visually 
actually makes you better at aiming i have found and generally just the overall gameplay experience is much better so i would recommend going to 120 and that's a new inclusion for console as well with vanguard so that's exciting that's the first time you guys can actually change that setting world motion blur we want off weapon motion blur we want off you don't want motion blur what motion blur does is when you have motion if i turn to the right everything's going to be blurred around it you don't want that so there we go nvidia low latency we have on plus boost i don't know why that was on on but you want on plus boost then you have got your audio settings you go through and you dial in that you're on headphones or whatever the case may be and set up all your game sound devices depending on your setup individually push to talks in there all that good stuff we don't really need to dive through that otherwise we'd be here forever get your interface and then controller controller is an important one aiming putting in all these dead zones what are we doing it's hard to tell basically you want to go with six and six that's what i go with that's what joe runs with and joe is crazy at warzone so these settings are based off what he likes to play with and i have found that it's made me a shitload better with controller when i started using the same settings then we have got the air vehicles the ground vehicles that's set to one currently i haven't actually driven those yet so I, uh, I may change them in the future, but one's going to be fine for now. Custom sensitivity per zoom, we want on, show more. Then you've got control over basically what your zoom is going to be when you actually zoom in. If you don't want to break down and go through each individual layer, so if you're happy for snipers to be the same as using a red dot sight, for example, then you can turn this off. And then you've just got an ADS, so aim down sight sensitivity multiplier, which I always recommend having around 0.85. That's what I always run with Warzone. So if you don't want to go into the nuances of breaking it down specifically, just go with 0.85. If you want to basically go into some great detail and maybe push the sniper a little bit higher, you can actually turn it on the custom. And then from there you can, so you could turn this on, for example, hit show more, and then you could change just the sniper, so high zoom, for example. You could put down lower, you could put it up higher, depending how much quicker you need to move with it, basically. I don't think I need to explain any more of that, but I'm gonna leave that one off. Button layout, preset, I've got default. I do have um, I do have buttons underneath the controller paddles, I should say. So um, it doesn't really matter where X, Y, um, A and B are for me because I can push them all underneath the controller. I've got all these set to standard. I do not want that set to inverted, but obviously if you like playing inverted, you would switch that to inverted there. Aim response curve, use dynamic. It's a great experience. Controller vibration, turn that shit off. No one wants that. Uh, weapon fire threshold on. Then you have got a few more things now down here is where it gets really interesting trigger dead zone i've left on the default being 13. then i have dialed in the dead zone for the sticks and what this basically means is left stick minimum input so how much do you have to push the left stick before it starts moving i have got that set to two and that is what the pros from the cdl were using in cold war last year then you have got the right stick minimum input, which is six. That's because you are doing finer movements with the right stick and the left stick is just strafing. So you wanna, you wanna move as fast as possible when you're trying to strafe. When you're trying to actually aim at someone, which you're gonna do with the right stick, you want a little bit more, um, a little bit more dead zone on that one. Then you've got the maximum inputs. So left, again, maximum input, 60 because we're using that to strafe, right one, 99, because we are using that to shoot at people. That's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this one and you want to see future content like this, then consider subscribing if you aren't already. And until next time, guys, keep gaming.